Killing a relative in order to collect an inheritance is a despicable motive for murder. In 1929, Sidney Fox traveled to London to take out £3,000 worth of insurance on his mother's life. The policies were due to expire at midnight the next day. Fox, who had spent time in prison for fraud and theft, appeared devoted to his ailing mother, Rosaline. Mother and son had been staying at the Metropole Hotel in Margate but the manager was growing uneasy about their ability to settle the bill. On the night of the 23rd of October, Fox began shouting that his mother's room was on fire. Hotel staff found her dead body inside. But the police were not convinced it was an accident and called in Sir Bernard Spilsbury to perform a post-mortem. Rosaline had been strangled. Fox, who was already in custody for writing duff checks, was arrested and charged with his mother's murder. He was tried as against him. The jury didn't believe him, and he was hanged a few weeks later. Infamous Murders Now looks at three recent inheritance killings. The first by a Florida businessman so anxious for his mother's money that he placed a bomb in her car. The second case involves the slaughter of five members of the same family in an English country house. And the third features two brothers in Beverly Hills who killed their parents for $14 million. In August 1985, Steve Benson, a 33-year-old Florida businessman, was arrested and charged with the murder of his mother and his nephew and the attempted murder of his sister. A few weeks earlier, Benson had rigged their car with a pipe bomb. It exploded on the driveway of his mother's house in Naples. Only Carol Lynn, Benson's sister, survived, although she was horribly burnt. Margaret Benson, who had inherited a $10 million tobacco fortune from her father, was thrown from the car and died instantly as did Scott, her 22-year-old grandson, who was behind the wheel. Carol Lynn was rushed to hospital. It was three weeks before she had recovered enough to make a statement. The police quickly realized that the explosion, which had reduced the car to a twisted heap of metal, was no accident. Suspicion fell on Stephen Benson, even though he appeared to be as grief-stricken as everyone else. A detailed examination of the wrecked car showed that the metal pipes used to make the bomb came from a shop close to Benson's office. And a shop assistant remembered Benson buying the pipes shortly before the explosion. Benson had also left a clear palm print on the receipt. Benson's trial for murder and attempted murder was held in Fort Myers, Florida. He pleaded not guilty. His still traumatized and heavily scarred sister gave a harrowing account of the explosion. I guess that seeing Scott's body and seeing the, the flames, it, shot, it kind of woke me up and, and I realized that the car was on fire and I had to get out. She told the court that Benson had insisted his mother sit in the front passenger seat, even though he knew she preferred the back. Just as he was about to get into the car himself, Benson said he'd forgotten something and ran back into the house. Then the car exploded. The court heard how Benson frequently borrowed from his mother to support his ailing security company. He bitterly resented this dependence. Benson was also embezzling his mother's money. Afraid of being discovered, he decided to murder her and inherit what he assumed would be a considerable sum. 
he had constructed the bomb himself. Benson was defended by Michael McDonnell, who faced a daunting task. They said he killed his mother because he stole two and a half million dollars from her. But you won't hear that in this courtroom because it wasn't true. Despite McDonald's efforts, the evidence against Benson was convincing, especially the palm print discovered on the pipe receipt. Prosecutor Jerry Black thought the case for the defense was weak. Mr. McDonald said he wasn't able to determine who had committed this particular crime. Mr. McDonald's problem is that he was looking everywhere else, everywhere else, except right here at the table in front of him. After deliberating for 11 hours, the jury found Benson guilty, with half its members recommending the death penalty. But the judge sentenced him to life in prison. As a convicted murderer, Benson found himself excluded from his mother's will under the terms of the Florida Slayers Act. He had killed her in vain. Later, his sister had the act extended to exclude Benson's children from benefiting from the will as well. In fact, Benson's mother was so disillusioned with him, she had considered disinheriting him anyway. Benson thought he could get away with murder, but he was the most obvious suspect and will be in jail probably for life. <laughs>